Make me holy like you That I may do the things you do Make me holy like you That I may ever feel your fire I believe this to be a really important word, and so I'm asking you please listen carefully. I've prophesied for a long time, warned prophetically, that there is a wave of hatred engulfing our country that would catch us all up and that we Christians must not be participants in it. When each side, here it is, when each side of what should be a rational discussion begins accusing the other side of ignorance, of divisiveness, racism, bigotry, wickedness, or some other unflattering, insulting label, and the discussion that could have produced understanding of real hearts and real positions becomes an argument that's laced with insults and name-calling and, and denigrating statements that are both veiled and obvious, and we see this in the news every day, then we've succumbed to the wave of hatred that's tearing this nation apart. It is demonically fueled. It clothes each side in a, in a facade of self-righteousness, at least in their own eyes, and makes rational discussion that might have led to real solutions impossible. Looking back, I know there have been times when I've succumbed to this myself, but I'm resigning from that wave of pollution. It's personally damaging to me at a spiritual level, and I've come to believe it's unbecoming a man who wishes to present Jesus as he really is. Please, 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 let's stop talking over one another and start listening. Why, you know, we might disagree with one another over certain issues, but we can certainly learn from one another by listening with open hearts. We can honor even those we feel are dishonorable, and, and in seeking to understand them, even we, we can come to sharpen our own position, even if we don't agree. Christian influence is not about forcing sinners to act or think like the righteous. Christian influence is about modeling the face and nature of Jesus, even in the face of men and women whose actions and beliefs we might think wrong or even wicked. Please, let's learn what spirit we're of and walk accordingly. On that note, wouldn't it seem that at the present time these days we're living in, that we're not wit witnessing a debate of ideas leading to the midterm elections in America, but we're seeing instead, really, a contest to see which side shoots itself in the foot more severely than the other. It may not be which side wins so much as which side loses less badly and then calls it a win. Each side claims that it has the compassionate and loving solution to the nation's problems while it demonizes the other side. How can this ever be a way to solve the very real issues that face us as a people? Hatred is always irrational. The progressive left is accused of being the thought police by the conservative right, while the conservative right has been and would be visiting the same on the progressive left. Romans 2.1 Therefore, since you have... I'm sorry. Therefore, you have no excuse, every one of you, who passes judgment. For in that which you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge, practice the very same things. You know, the same disease that has infect, infected the nation has also invaded the body of Christ, and it's the same demon. We fight among ourselves, labeling one another heretics and purveyors of demonic manifestations over minor issues of doctrine and practice that don't touch on the core issues of salvation. Stop it. Just stop it. In the name of all its holy. Stop it. Honor the prayer of Jesus the night before he was sacrificed for our sins. The glory which you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one. He's praying to his Father, that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be perfected in unity, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them, even as you have loved me. That's John 17, 22 and 23. Don't you think, consider this, don't you think that our Savior is much more grieved over our lack of love than he is when our doctrines and our practices aren't quite right on? God forgive us. God help us. It's our oneness. It's our love for one another that gives our gospel credibility in the eyes of the world. 
Right now, we're not making that witness. And so I'm pleading, resign from the culture of hatred. Resign from the culture of criticism. Resign from cooperating with the demonic spirit that is tearing the nation apart and trying to tear the body of Christ apart. I pray for us, God, teach us to love. Teach us who you really are. Teach us what it's really about. Cleanse us, wash us clean, and let us walk in your righteousness. Amen. Make me holy like you, that I may do the things you do. Make me holy like you, that I may ever feel your fire.